whitey tighties or boxers? Everybody wants to know a little bit, uh, you know, what's behind this guy, but they don't want to see his behind. <laughs> We're gonna start with weird questions that, that nobody asked Bill. Bill, how, how did you start rocking the mustache? <laughs> I started rocking the mustache because when I was four years old, playing tag inside the house, we had a glass coffee table. Mm -hmm. And playing tag, tripped, fell, ripped my upper lip off. Oh. So I have 37 stitches that yeah. had to be sewn. My Some lip of them back look on. like they're still in there. Yeah, I think there <laughs> still are. Still are. Um, so I always had this white line oh. across my upper lip. So as soon as the mustache was able to start coming in, mm -hmm. I just grew it because I was always embarrassed by that scar. So as soon as I could grow the mustache, I started growing the mustache. Okay, next question. Only Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime could rock a haircut like that. <laughs> what brought you to that place? Um, it's thick and I don't like going to the barber and I like just getting up in the, sh in the morning, taking a quick shower, showering and running and I'm here. So if you're, you're the only guy I know that uses a to lawnmower compare. to cut his hair. If you're going to compare me to Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think that was a good thing. <laughs> Final question, Bill, uh, whitey tighties or boxers? Uh, boxer briefs, actually. Hybrid. Hybrid, hybrid. We're going for the best of the both. Okay, your turn to ask questions. Okay. Maybe things that people don't know. Ooh, let's see. So Damien, a lot of people don't know that you are, aside from the creator and inventor of Radical Rick, mm -hmm. that you are one of the most infamous mural painters and surf painters in the world. How did you start going down that pathway? I, I love being in the paint. I love the process of figuring stuff out and solving problems. And when there's brushes or spray cans or art supplies involved, it's, it's my happy place, right? So uh, I was lucky enough in a very early age that people, uh, teachers and family, always gave me blank something, a blank piece of paper, a blank wall or whatever, and allowed me to doodle. So to this day, I love painting on walls and doing that sort of stuff. Awesome. So second part to that question, okay. since you are a surf rat, mm -hmm. um, what's the biggest wave you've ever surfed? Uh, biggest wave uh, I've ever dropped in on is probably about 12 foot. Nice, and, that's and, huge. Yeah, and uh, depends if you're measuring it like the Hawaiians do from the back or the front, um, but about a 12 foot face. Um, and the last big wave I tried to take off on was during a big swell at El Porto and it almost drowned me because I got caught inside. And now I'm like really content with a little perfect four foot glassy wave without any, any drama. I'm fine with it. Just drop in and just smack the lip, whoop, drop down, snap. Ah. Do you know that I tried to surf once? And yeah. only once. What happened? So I had a buddy of mine who let me drive his car before I had my license, and we drove down to Huntington <laughs> at night. Why does that not surprise me? Yes. It, so we're driving down to Huntington yeah. in a 65 Mustang, surfboards on the oh. roof, right? Oh. This classic thing, right? Oh. Nighttime. He's going to teach me how to surf at oh, night. Oh, you're going under the pier? Did under you paddle out under the pier? Paddle out underneath the pier. And the lights? The lights. Oh, that's creepy, man. I got a chest full of barnacles. Oh, did you? From the, the from pier? The pier. From the, the posts, yeah. Post. Chest full of barnacles. For, for you guys who don't know out there, Huntington Beach Pier is one of the few places that has lights so you can actually surf at night. And all the water comes in, and the only way for the water to come out, the best way for all the water and all the waves to come out is it shoots you up through the pier. So when you paddle out, you paddle out underneath the pier. But if a wave hits during that time, the, 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 the pylons are gigantic cement pylons covered with barnacles. And that would be Bill Shredded hitting chest. an unmovable object. Shredded my chest. Shredded it. So first time surfing, last time surfing. Good. I like the story though. Oh my God. That hurts so bad. Salt water in the... Oh. But it was fun. 
It was absolutely fun. Well, it was weird. It, it was, was weird. It's a dark thing when you're paddling out in the dark and you think there might be some kind of Jaws-like creature. And you're maybe. feeling, I know that was a jellyfish. Oh, I know yeah. there's a shark over there. Yeah. What's that over there? Okay, question for you. When you get a jelly, no, when you get a stingray uh, sting, what do you do? Is it a stingray sting or a jellyfish sting? Stingray. <sighs> when they get you and you bleed. You die. There's a wife's tail that you pee on it. I thought that was jellyfish, and that's why I asked jellyfish or stingray. And what they actually do is the venom is, is really painful, and they drop your foot into a scalding hot, almost boiling uh, bag of water. Oh! And so what it does is it messes up your brain. Your brain goes, oh, does my foot hurt so much from jellyfish? I mean, excuse me, stingray, stingray. or... Uh, the, from the hot water. From boiling the and so then it boiling messes the with your brain right off and it my doesn't bone. hurt as much. But then Little you, known fact. But then you have no meat. You're down to a bone. I know. Peg Leg Pete. Peg Leg Pete. Yeah. New character. Oh, bobblehead. Watch for it. Peg Guys, Peg Pete. welcome to Supercross BMX. For those of you who don't know, Damien Fulton. Damien Fulton, the creator of Radical Rick. If you've ever read BMX Plus magazine, and if you're watching this channel, I know you have. This magazine has been the lifeblood for BMXers for 45 years, uh, I'm gonna say. Um, everybody, when just gonna say, you'd go to the newsstand, you'd see BMX Plus magazine, you're like, rad, the new BMX magazine. The first thing you would do is you would turn to the back and you would go, okay, where is it, where is it, where is it? Boom, Radical Rick. This is what you want. I need this. this whole magazine. This is all you wanted. Will you, you, will want you be my PR man? You're so good. I'm not good. This is. I'm just telling facts. This is the fact. So you would go to the newsstand, and out of this whole magazine, boom! This is what you wanted. You wanted this. So, guys, today we're graced with Damien's presence. Damien decided to bless us with this. He came today to sign the Spike Speed Wrenches. If you ordered your Spike Speed Wrench, it's on the way. Damien signed it, numbered it. Ryder was his assistance today, or assistant today, assistance. He was assisting you. Yes, he was, he so was. He was an assistant to your assistance. Uh, I'm not sure how that all goes. When we decided to sit down today, I actually thought this was cool. I bought this magazine off of eBay the other day, and I purposely bought it knowing that Damien was coming because the very first time I met Damien was 40 years ago. And it was 40 years ago when I went up to BMX Plus Magazine to drop off our high-tech frame. So I took our high-tech frame up there. We actually have one of them here. And uh, we've been selling them on the website now, but we were talking. So I told Damien the story downstairs while he was signing. I was downstairs in the editor's office in the San Fernando offices of BMX Plus. Back then, it was a two-story office, and the buzz through the office that day was that Damien showed up. Damien was dropping off the new Radical Rick. I actually wanted to see the new Radical mm -hmm. Rick. I was a huge Radical Rick fan. He wouldn't let me see it. So like all things that Bill gets involved with, he found a way to uh, sneak up to the upstairs management offices and I introduce did. himself. And I said, I did. what is that little kid doing with a mustache <laughs> running around the offices? And they said, hey, that's Bill Ryan. He's just invented a new BMX product, and it was that frame that you're celebrating your 40th anniversary. It appears in that issue yeah. of BMX Plus. So yeah, about 40 years 40 ago, years I met ago. you. And then we've been friends and family ever since. Bill was 15, I was 14. I think you were 12. <laughs> Good answer. I think you were 12. I've had, uh, on my way in here, I went in through the drive through Mick Botox. So I tried to, do I look okay? Yeah, I thought, it, good. good thing you didn't go through the Whammo Mick Botox. Yeah, yeah. The Whammo Whammo Burger. Bo yeah, oh, that's what I'm saying, the Whammo no, Botox no. would have been bad. The smell comes from over Nobody there. Nobody knows, the, he knows all the deep cuts of Radical Rick. And now that you have the book. I'm I telling mean, you, that book, I'm gonna be reading it. And what I understand, the good, good approach is right by, the, right by the, the bathroom, by the toilet and you just start kind of weeding through it. That book will never end up in the bathroom by the toilet. I can promise you that. 
that book. Uh, if it did, it wouldn't bother me because I know it'd be being put to good use. No, I, I promise you that book. Uh, I, I was actually you. You humbled me and blew me away when you told me that I had a page in that book. Mm -hmm. uh, I was actually shocked. And then mm -hmm. when you showed it to me, um, the emotions ran high. Let's say oh, that. Thanks, man. Um, when you told me that you were finally going to do that book, I remember yeah. it was five years ago, six years ago, when yeah. I started trying to pressure you to do the book. That's because the book for 15 years, people had started and stopped it. The, the process. They said, oh, I'm going to put the book together for you. It's going to be awesome. You're going to finally have all the episodes in one book, 154 episodes in one book. And, and I was very busy at the time with raising kids and a career. So to have somebody take that off my shoulders would be great. But most people, it died a few months after the water cooler. And you were persnickety. And you said, you got to do it. How's the, how's the book? Remember, you were keeping me accountable. And finally, uh, I'm just so happy that the book came out hardcover. I think it turned out really nice. And yes. You just you, got tired of my emails. No. You got tired of me bugging you. No, You're no, like, no. I, no, stop it, stop it. No, no, You're no. like, I'm putting out the book. Just, just stop, no. just stop, please. Hey, hey. So now the movie. Well. Should we talk about the Radical Rick movie? Are we allowed to yet? Uh, Are we the, still the on the NDA strike with is Disney? Over. The SAG strike is over. I can tell you that, as always, there's, there's a, a, a period of great interest, um, but uh, I will believe it. Should I start on the emails again? When we're on the set Phone and calls? they say action. But until then, all the kind of Hollywood chit chat. You know, we started on the it. costumes already. We started on all the drawings. We yeah. got all that gun. Oh all that's my gone. gosh. Yeah, and the, that, that's for part two. We're gonna go look at all the costumes that Bill has hand stitched himself. We're doing this. <laughs> what I was going to say uh, about Bill Ryan is, do you know that he's taller than the average human? A lot of people, you look at him and you go, gosh, you know, he, he just looks like a jolly old guy. Or jolly, a jolly fellow. <laughs> but in truth, you're what, six foot? Six three. Dang! Can you believe that? And he doesn't wear lifts. No. Actually, I need to get these new shoes. My soles are wearing out. I keep trying to get Vans to send me new shoes, but they won't. So, so the next time you see Bill in real life, don't you know how a lot of times you go, gosh, you know, you look so much taller on the, on the big screen. Bill will not disappoint. Unlike Prince. Prince was actually much shorter. But could that guy play guitar? Oh my God, he could play guitar. First time I met him though, I was like, are you a midget? Wait, you met him? Yeah. You know, you know what um, Mick Jagger told me? Hmm. Never to name drop. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to name drop. <laughs> I'm kidding you. Oh, so, so. Oh, that was good, because you dropped Mick Jagger's name. <laughs> I was slow I'm on the uptake. Like, I was slow on the uptake. That was good. Yeah, I like yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, back I felt Prince. bad for a minute. And back to you. Prince, you know? Prince, so did you meet him? Prince, yeah. Yeah. Did you, were you shooting him or? No, no. Um, Okay, not trying to name drop, but backstage at a couple different right. events, um, we were at the forum and um, he was sound checking and it was cool. That's he came cool. walking up and I was just like, he's a little guy. Oh, he's this big around. Ooh, he's Ryder is twice could, the you size. Could. Yeah, I mean. Ryder is twice the size, literally. And you know, he was crazy basketball player. I did not he know that. He was very good at basketball. I did not he didn't know wear that. platform shoes. <laughs> he wore platform know, shoes all the I time, know, though. I know. He he was really nice, though. Super, super nice. I was okay. never a Prince fan, but I was like, but you could respect the dude. Respect. And then after I met him and I got to meet him and everything, I went back and started listening to the way that he played, and I became a huge Prince fan. Huge. Prince you know the fan. story about him and Billy Gibbs. No. But he tracked down Billy Gibbs after a ZZ Top show. Billy Gibbs was in a bar somewhere. Right. You know, sitting by himself, chilling. And little Prince pulls up on a little seat and goes, Hi. <laughs> You're really good, man. I love it when you do the fly G solo with the whammy bar, man. Like, it's so good. And then they just chit-chatted all night, talked about rock and roll. So Billy Gibbs is an amazing guy. I actually have an amp. Um, do you know Dave Catching? 
No. David Catching, excuse me. Oh, I know David. Why didn't yeah, you say that? I know. No, I don't I'm know sorry. either of those guys. Um, so he has Rancho de Luna Studios out in Joshua, in Joshua Tree. And he's been in Eagles of Death Metal, Queens okay. of the Stone okay. Age, uh, Earthlings, um, the list of bands yeah. goes on and on. So he has one of my amps out there that Elaine Johannes bought for me. Mm -hmm. And Elaine bought the amp for me mm -hmm. and took it out there and said, hey, Bill, you know, I took it to David's, you know, pick it up from David next time you're out there. And I'm like, okay, cool. So... Dave's like, hey, Bill, can I play your amp? And I'm like, yeah, you can play my amp. And he's like, oh, Bill, this thing rocks. So then he's like, hey, uh, Billy Gibbs is here. Uh, can he play your amp? And I'm like, yeah, but here's the thing. You got to get him to autograph it. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. And then he's like, hey, Bill, Joe Walsh is here. Can he play your amp? And I'm like, yeah, but you got to get him to oh. autograph it. So now he's been like, Bill, when are you going to come pick up your amp? And I'm like, oh, you just keep it there and you just keep collecting <laughs> autographs on that thing. I just want... Okay, question for you. Uh -huh. If you were to meet somebody, mm -hmm. is there anybody out there that you haven't met that you would fanboy over, fangirl, like, oh, uh, you get Twitter pated? Honestly, I think the only one I would right now would be Josh Homme. And in the past... Um, I don't think that there has been one. I know Josh Hummy from Queens of the Stone Age. Um, I'm just a huge, huge fan mm. of his playing, a huge fan of what he's done for the music and the desert community. I met Dave Grohl, and the first time I met Dave Grohl, I was like, oh, this is really cool. But he's so nice yeah. and he's so humble. It was just a thing to where you couldn't fanboy over him. To mm -hmm. where it was just like he made you feel totally at ease, super quick, super at ease. I mean, he made us, he made me feel like he was more friends with him than you and me are right now, and we've known each other forty years. But isn't that cool? that quick? What is it about um, the really good guys that 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 instantly, like, there's no pretense, and no it's pretense. like, you know, they can they can step right into your your sphere and then you know you could see him 10 years later and, and you'd go remember that time and, and they pick it up like yeah, that they're good people and, and that's how it was with dave grohl so the first time i met dave grohl i was doing a bunch of stuff with dirty um so one of my great friends was the drummer for the dead kennedys mm -hmm. who unfortunately has passed away darren hensley mm -hmm. you know dirty bird um and we were at a show and dave came up and Dave's like, you know, the reason I got into drumming was because of you. You're the best oh, drummer in great. the world. And, and Dirty's like, oh, cool, cool, cool. And Dirty's like big league in him. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing, man? What, what's going on? And, and Dave walks away and I'm like, dude, what did you, did you realize? And he's like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. So the next time I see him is about four years later and I'm at a Sam Ash music store and Dave Grohl and Taylor Hawkins mm -hmm. and Taylor had just joined Foo Fighters at that point. Mm -hmm. They come walking up and he's like, Bill, how are you? And I'm like, are you kidding? You remembered your name? Totally remembered my name, right? Kim was walking well, up. Well, you're hard to forget. I mean, you, I'm easily you, you make an impression. Trust dude. me, I'm easily forgettable. You're modest. Well, Thank you. But I was like, hey, how are you? And at that point, it was Father's Day weekend, and my wife was there, and it was prior to Tucker being born. And uh, we were looking around and just, you know, looking at some guitar stuff. And Is that true that that night Tucker was conceived? It was, actually. That's, that's a true story. Okay, keep going. No. <laughs> um, but... He just was so warm and so comfortable. And it was funny because, you know, he was speaking to Lincoln and he's like, hey, I'll, I can give you some drum lessons and this and that. And Lincoln, I think he was like five at the time, six. And, you know, he's just like, mm, okay, whatever. No clue. Not every kid gets that kind right. of invitation. Right. No clue. Just, okay, mm -hmm, whatever. You know, and we were talking and they were just picking up supplies because they were getting ready to record another Foo Fighter album. And... You know, we hung out, spoke for a little while, and off he went. And, you know, every so often we just touch base and just like, hey, and he's so nice. See, one thing you guys don't know about that, 
we were earlier on downstairs when we were signing, we were talking about Bill. He, he casually talks, well, I, I, I know so-and-so. What you don't know about Bill is Bill knows everyone in the industry. And he's had some kind of great interaction. I guarantee you it's 99% good. There are some one percenters. Oh. But those people are just rotten to the core to begin. I got the people. Next episode, me. people that hate Bill Ryan. I'll Stay never tuned. Say it. I'll never say it. You're the one who knows everybody though. Come on, man. Look at what you've done. You don't know nothing. You don't know Jack. You don't so, know. So I don't are know we nothing. allowed to talk about some of your NDAs? I mean, can I mention the how did that one go? I don't know. Do you are, remember our last meeting when are you were you, going for Are your... you impersonating some kind of superhero? Because mm -hmm. that was awesome. <laughs> zoom, 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 zoom. Do you remember our last meeting? Rivian. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, are we allowed to talk on yes. that? Or are you yeah, still on an MDA? Absolutely. MDA? Rivian, which is an electric truck, fantastic trunk, had hired me to do urban... To, to that was my... I mean, would this guy like kill it in charades? <laughs> um, that was a uh, was going to be a pro was going to be a project uh, to oh. help help introduce Rivian to the beach community. They're based out of. Can talk about the Disney thing? Yes, Disney Disney's so we can uh, talk about that one. Sh um, Shanghai Castle everybody. for the fifth anniversary in in Disneyland. I helped design that castle. Yeah, yeah see, yes, yeah, he knows everybody. See, he tries to push it off. He's one of those guys, he's a reflector. He, he likes to take all of his love and push it out on everybody else. Damien's the guy. This is the man. He created Radical Rick. He took his ingenious mind and made this little guy that everybody in the world wants to be. Bill Ryan, my promoter. Guys, I think we only have 30 minutes on this today because Damien has to go grab lunch, not from Whammo Burger, although that could be a good choice Ooh. for some people. I so, like that. That's great. Why don't we start a franchise, Bill? Whammo we're, Burgers. We're going to. <laughs> Guys, thank you for tuning in. This is my brother, Damien. I'm Bill Ryan. I'm I Damien think. Fulton. This That's is, Bill Ryan. This is Damien Fulton. I'm Bill Ryan. This is Radical Rick. I'm Bill Ryan. Oh. I'm Bill Ryan. I know everybody. <laughs> All right, are we saying goodbye? I think we're saying goodbye. Thank you, everybody out there. Guys, go ride!